All right. Our next speaker has a demo. David McComas of uh, NASA Goddard will be demoing the Core Flight System Hardware Interface app development. So just share. Yes. Bear with me. I gotta share, share my, my screen. screen. Oops, try it. I think my mic's on. Sorry. It looked like it took away my bar. There it is. Sorry. Gotta, I'm going to try something risky here. <laughs> I'm going to share a couple things uh, and go. So my name is Dave McComas, and um, I retired from Goddard in 2019. And so uh, now I've actually started a nonprofit called Open Stemware, just a hardware software for education. And something I've learned from uh, retired civil servants are really good at not making money. So, <laughs> so um, now Chris has me nervous because Space Camp is written with Python on the ground and all C in the flight <laughs> software. <laughs> so thanks, Chris. <laughs> um, and actually, I'm mean, in a little shift here. So um, you know, there has been a lot of things about you know safety, critical, and all that kind of stuff. Things, which is all great. So this is all about education. So we can relax. We don't have to. We're going to, a whole different paradigm here. So I started Basecamp because um, I, after retiring and some of the pandemic, did some stuff online, and um, it seems like a really big need in flight software, especially, is to have some education. So I'd love any any input that you guys have, you know, in terms of if you've done internal training or things. Just um, I've, I've created a tool that I think has some value because it's. Um, it's very project oriented, kind of like from the maker space. So you can, um, it comes with a CFS target and a very simple, I wouldn't call it a ground system. It's not intended to be, it's just a command telemetry interface. And then you can build solutions that are targeted for teaching a particular element. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, just go through a couple slides then I'm gonna switch into demo mode. I'm doing everything live, so this could be a little risky. Um, I should know better. But um, so why space camp? It's an immersive um, tool, so you can, you know, it's a lot of hands-on stuff. It's actually customizable, so everything I'm going to show you really, when it starts up, it's just looking for templates and things. It's, it's actually can be adapted. It's more a, a framework. And um, we've heard a lot about CFS, so it's practical, you know, for somebody that wants to learn the CFS, that's fine if they want to get in a career. Even if you don't want to learn it, it's actually just good for a framework that you can get your hands on and making little labs and things like that. Um, so just even teaching software engineering. Um, the NASA brand is still alive and well, so if you go to a class and use it, it's, it's got some, you know, it's helpful. And I've learned, I, I had another, um, some of you may be familiar with OpenSAT kit, which combined Cosmos, CFS, and the 42 simulator. And that was just a beast to maintain. I mean, NOS 3, it's great, and they have a team, but I was by myself part-time, and I just couldn't keep up. So, and I, what I also discovered was you, you put that, it, half hour to install, and you're trying to be in a classroom setting, and there's just too many variables. So my goal is to get everything really simple. Um, so today I'm gonna to go through three demos. First one is gonna be, um, we're, we're gonna create an app, and it's a temp, just generated from a template. And then I'm just gonna show that there's code tutorials that go along with each app. And the approach I've taken is, and again, you can write more app templates if you want, is, a lot of times you do a hello world and you start doing exercises and you start getting too far away from hello world and it's too hard to teach the next lesson. So I've come up with a series of hello apps, like hello child. So then you can teach child task. So you've got some exercises. The template will get you the base thing started and then you can do exercises. And it comes up, it has its own little GUI uh, window to go through there. And then the other thing is um, projects. And I'm gonna do a payload manager, which is a uh, software only. And then the Raspberry Pi is already pre-configured. So I actually am gonna go through compiling, but I'm gonna be tight on time. Luckily, a lot of people have talked about, oops, it's taken a while to even go through the, move the slides. So I don't have to really talk, but CFS is just a message base with apps. So hopefully not that much of the architecture. Basecamp is really about a GUI and a CFS target. It can either be local or remote. And I'm not actually doing remote here. I'm running Basecamp on the Pi. And the only thing I, other thing I want to do with the slides is it comes with, uh, 
it comes with a default suite of apps, a command ingest, telemetry output, a file manager, and a file transfer and a scheduler. So they're always there, part of Basecamp. You download it, that's what you get. And then anything else there, you just, it's additive. And I guess I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to go through anything else other than I'm really excited. I'm actually working with uh, Moorhead State and Stanford. They're doing a project, and this is kind of, we're, we're working together right now, and it's kind of proof of concept. They actually contacted me, and they wanted to do a communication project that they had done last year. Um, this was actually a professor at Stanford. And he said, well, we just had it on the bare metal. We had a print statement and no, it's no context. So after it, he said it was all successful from a hardware point of view, but they really wanted to give it context so the students would get a feel for, you know, using a system that's more, you know, gives a software framework. So they actually were working together and for a fall class, so we hope to have this ready. But really it's just using the, the core apps and their hardware library, and we're writing some link manager apps that students can actually interact. So, excuse me, I'm running a little allergies here as well. So now I'm going to go into demo mode. So here's um, Windows WSL, and I've already downloaded and installed, so here's the GUI, um, just to kind of get you a feel. And so this is with the base target running, or not running yet, just installed, and we can go ahead and start it. So what's going to happen, it's just running, starting the CFS with the, the you know, base target. I use this middle window as a process, that's like our terminal window. And we can go around the, the menu real quick. From a developer, you can create an app, download an app, and we'll, we'll go through some of those. Oper, operator, we've we got a little file, file browser I can show you. The scripting, I'm not actually, it's kind of a placeholder, and I'm not sure I want to write anything with scripting, because the idea here, again, is not to get into too much of that. You'd, I'd rather, you know, you could translate and have a translator from the database to another system. There's documents, so you can, you know, just bring them up and page through documents. Tutorials, these tutorials that are in here are the ones that are, they're about Basecamp itself. So you can actually, there's a demo app that comes with it. Um, and I'm just, you can send commands. All these commands are generated, and I'll uh, get into that a little bit, uh, from electronic data sheets, which is the single source definition of command and telemetry. And that's kind of what makes this plug and play work. And so, and then we have our telemetry screen. So I'll go ahead and like the demo app, you just bring it up. And actually all these texts here, the GUI, it's just reading the EDS to understand. That's why it's just text in there. And that's literally from the electronic data sheets. So it's a very simple Python GUI interface. It's really using the libraries generated during the build process. So let's go ahead and um, create an app. So here are the templates I mentioned, and if we do something like hello object, that's a little more involved. This is like an object. The, the apps I've written are kind of, they're all in C, but they're object-based. So this would teach, you know, um, some ideas behind that, that architecture. So you do a create app, it's created it. So it's on the disk, but it hasn't done anything yet. Um, so let's stop the CFS for right now. But now you gotta add it to the CFS target. So you come under here and you say add app. And now we see this menu is populated with the, what I just created. If you wanted to teach about how to build an app, you could go through these manual steps, but I'm just gonna hit auto, and this is gonna auto integrate, and you don't have to worry about all the. So now it's added to the CFS target build. Now we gotta build the new target. This will take a, you know, not too long on this laptop. So what's doing now, so at the, the electronic data sheets tool chain, this is actually using the tech branch of the CFS. It's not in the main branch, but the plans are, and we'll hear something tomorrow, um, is to add, eventually get the EDS tool chain into, um, into the main release. So I don't buy this one, but this one came out of Glenn, and it's Joe Hickey is the guy behind it, and he now works at Goddard. So this is building actually flight artifacts and ground artifacts. And it should be done soon. Or it's done. So now I got to restart the GUI because it's created a new Python library with the new app in it. So when we bring it up, if we look at the command menu, we have a high object. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the high object telemetry packet. 
and we, there's not being populated. We haven't started the CFS. Uh, I'll go ahead and start it, and now we have telemetry. So it's that fast to actually create an app, integrate it into the new target, and you're up and running. Um, we can send it uh, a no-op or whatever one is. So it's, it's a simple, this object just has a counter in it and so that, you know, the students could learn and modify, you know, the code. So if we send a no-op, we'll see that the no-op event came in. The command counter should go up by one. And the other thing that happened, which was, now we have an extra tutorial down here. So hello object, we can bring that up and these are coding lessons. So you can add a, a new, a noon type to the EDS, so now we're not gonna get, um, instead of the counter mode in one or zero, it's gonna say increment or decrement. I'm not gonna go through a coding exercise, but sorry, <laughs> we had time. Um, and if you started it, what the exercise looks like is this is the code that you wanna modify, and here's the individual exercise. So you can go through and have different files that you wanna modify for a particular lesson, and then the students can just edit right here and then rebuild the target and test it all, all just, all integrated. Um, so I'm gonna keep moving at a fairly fast pace because now here's where I gotta cross my fingers because I'm hot spot here and a couple other things going on. So now we're gonna download app for a project. Oh, let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna come out of here. And so projects, I mentioned There's a website that a partner of mine we, he, who maintains this website, it's actually called Open Mission Stack, and it's got um, a lot of learning resources, and one of the things it has is projects that go along with Basecamp. Um, there it goes. So this payload manager project is out there. So it says objectives, there's some YouTube videos that you know, help support it. What do you need? What do you learn? This one's software only, so it's a nice for this demo. Here are the steps, and here's once you do it, how you operate it. You can get the design information, and here there's not so many coding exercises. So you got a website that supports that, and we'll go back to the, the GUI. Oops. I guess I still got um, Okay, so now we're back. So how did, I, so what I did was hit, you know, add app or download app. And so what actually happened here is it went out to GitHub and is looking at a repository um, of Basecamp apps. So now for the payload manager, I'm gonna select them all. This is where it might get a little slow. It'll go off and disappear, hopefully it'll, I need three, now you don't know that the instructions on the web said you need these three components. So I need a library and two apps and I'm gonna go ahead and hit download. I tried this earlier, it does work. It just kinda of takes a while. <laughs> so while that's, while that's happening, um, so the payload manager, instead of just being one app, the, the, the project also teaches the idea you can have a, another app being a simulator behind the scenes. And then the shared library is just, until you, and so you don't need any hardware, but you can teach a lot of the concepts about what a payload manager app might do. So now it's saying it's successfully it's gonna go through each one and tell me it cloned it. So now they're all, so now if we go back to add app, and this is adding an app to a target, we see our three downloaded apps. Um, the live's gotta be added first. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this fast because this time's gonna take. I wanna get some questions if I can. And then manager, that part. I don't have a package manager, so. Uh, and now we can build new again. So um, as that's going, let me see what else I can explain. Um, well, what, what I'll explain, and I don't know if I have time, so I was hoping to be able to make a quick run the payload manager and you know run the simulator at the same time so you could actually see that it's generating simulated data and creating a science data file. The science data file is just text. That, um, and it's, it's mainly there because um, that's, just, again, easy. So you don't have to worry. Again, you're teaching at the first level here. You're not trying to complicate everything with binary data and things like that. Um, so there's the, and that's complete. Now we've got to restart it again. Oops, I'll have to go there. Here we 
they should have the target should have all the the simulator. So now we got the manager. Um, you know, so we got the other apps are now in there again. So payload manager. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can. Sorry, I'm not going to run this. I will show one. What my goal was, uh, if I had the time, I was going to. Um, well, let me start it anyway. We'll start it, and I'll highlight. So I don't have time to actually run the little sim. But if we start the, the images, I'll, I'll highlight another feature. So this is the file browser. So you got your ground and your flight. And I'll just show one quick thing. So if you want to send a file to the ground, again, if you're, again, think learning that you just want things easy. All the plumbing is simple so you can focus on what you're trying to teach. So these things just need to work. Um, I've been in many situations where that's hard. So each file, just to highlight a little design feature, each file has a JSON in your file. And this is part of the reason all the integrating and automation can work, because all the topic IDs is what's used by the, the um, electronic data sheets gets resolved during the build process where it can just put in the topic IDs and everything can plug and play. So that's kind of part of the magic behind all this. So now I've now I'm going to go to, I got to blink a light before this happens. <laughs> so, so I also have the, uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi here, so I'll just put it up here. Um, and there's an LED. So this has got actually three projects on it. Um, and again, the blink in the LED is called GPIO Demo, and that's on that project page, which I won't go back to yet. Um, so what I've done here is pre-configured the Pi. That would have taken too long to compile. But something I also highlight, so you can go under developer again, and it has a feature where you can say, you know, tell me my app status. So I've already preloaded a library and um, oh, two, two apps. So there's the GPIO demo, and there's also a button app, so you can push a button and get inputted back into the CFS through an app. And they both use that Pi IO library. But um, this is also a way, what I've discovered with myself, is you start monkeying around after the auto integration, you start thinking around with things and you mess something up. It's nice to have this, this tool just goes and checks all the, all the plug-in logic for, in the target and makes sure everything's still integrated properly. So if we start this, it'll start the button app and the GPIO app. And there we go, I see a light blinking. Okay, I just, whoops, I hit the wrong, oh jeez. I about to hit the telemetry. Now we gotta start. I don't know if that's still working, I'm gonna hit stop. I may now have, there it goes. So, and then there's GPIO demo. Whoops, hold on. This is really delayed here. <laughs> so, and there it goes. And it's just set the two seconds on and six seconds off, or wait, look, three or two. So that's about it. I, I yeah, I'll open it up for questions. I got a couple minutes here. So sorry I had to rush through so quick some of those, but um, hopefully that got the the main thing I wanted to say. So what just happened is you know we built two targets, we had two different you know, coding exercises, and all that within a matter of you know 18 minutes. So I kind of wanted to really get that was the message I want to get across. EDS lib make their, the EDS make things easier to get to that contribute to the ease of setup for students. Would you recommend picking it up even though it's not in the the CFS uh, trunk yet? Well, it, it, it hides some of its complexity, so you can focus on teaching at a different level. But if you want to teach about command and telemetry, it may not be. I mean, but yes, but I, I, I'm trying to answer. I think it eases definitely for the teaching of concepts, software concepts, and not worrying about the, some of the plumbing. I, did I 
answer that correctly? Or? Yes, yeah. And but, but if you want to teach EDS, you can certainly do that as well. Okay. Do you have resources on for teaching EDS? No, unfortunately. And the tool chain itself is not that documented. So I I know Joe personally, and you know, but I had to reverse engineer some of the libraries. But it's very powerful. I mean, that's the thing. That's the beauty of this is it just it makes it all a single source definition. So when you develop apps, you write your EDS, and it, the tool chain produces flight artifacts and ground artifacts. So we had some online questions related to EDS. Um, how does it auto-update EDS, and does it have a code to EDS tool in the background? It, it's not auto-updating. So EDS, for each app you write, you got to manually write the EDS, and then the tool chain creates those um, C artifacts in a Python library. Python libraries. I think I, did I answer that right? Because it's... It doesn't auto, no, nothing auto generates EDS. That was part of the question. Okay, this, uh, a quick question. Is there any news on EDS getting into the main line of CFS? I'm going to have to default that. <laughs> the, the NASA got it. I'm retired now, so I, I don't know. The, <laughs> I have to default that to Goddard or NASA. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sure.